Number 43, a solution is 0.010 molarity in both copper 2 plus and cadmium CD2 plus. What percentage of the CD2 plus remains in the solution when 99.9% of the Cu2 plus has been precipitated as CUS by adding sulfide? Okay, interesting question, but we will get down to it. All right, so basically the bulk of this question is saying, what is the percentage of the cadmium 2 plus that is remaining in the solution? Now, if we're remaining in the solution, that means that we did not precipitate. Remember, precipitate means that we formed a solid. So we're looking for CD2 plus aqueous, right? The percentage of what's left. Okay. Now, they did tell us that 99.9% .9 of the copper 2 plus has been precipitated. So let's work on that, right? Now, if 99.9% .9 has been precipitated, that means that all of that percentage has turned into a solid. Remember, precipitated means solid. So if you started off with 100% of Cu2+, and they're saying that 99.9% .9 went into the solid, and the solid is part of the CUS, so that means that 99.9 .9 is now going into this copper as just being a solid. How much Cu2 plus is left over? Well, you started off with 100. Now we're down 99.9%, .9%, right? And 100 minus 99.9, .9, I only have 0.1% percent left of Cu2 plus in solution. And that's going to be super important. So that's why they gave us this number. 99.9% .9 has been precipitated. That means that only 0.1% left is just Cu2 plus. So now let's run with that. What is the actual concentration if there's only 0.1% left? They did state that you know, we started off with 0.01 molarity of both Cu2 plus and Cd2 plus. So if we started with 0 0.010 molarity of the Cu2 plus, but now unfortunately there's only 0.1% left. Seems like we just have to do a percentage based off of this, right? And remember, percent is always part divided by whole times 100. So the percent is going to be the 0 0.1. The whole amount is what we started with. So that was 0 0.010. And we're searching for what that remaining concentration is for just the 0.1%. And then times 100 because it's a percentage. So. Right now, we're all just, if you notice, we've just been doing like side calculations, right? So I have 0 0.1 equals something times 100 X over 0 0.010. Okay, so, I mean, divide by 100 first, and maybe I'll just pull this over. We'll make this a little bit, you know, there we go. So 0.1 divided by 100 is 0 0.001 equals x over 0 0.010. Maybe I'll bring this maybe over here. And now, just solve for x, we could just cross multiply, right? It's just these two concentrations multiplied by each other. Whoop. So 0 0.001 times 0 0.01. A lot of ones here. So we get X equals 1.0. We'll just do two sig figs, right? 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity, because that's, remember, it, it was molarity on the bottom, so a molarity has to be on the top. And this is what is remaining. So molarity of the Cu2 plus is remaining. 
Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So all of this like side work here to figure out that we just had one times 10 to the negative fifth Cu2 plus remaining in the solution. All right, well now where am I gonna go from here? Well, let's just take this and put it over here because this is the information. Okay, now maybe pause the video if you need to, but I do need more space. So just pause the video if you need to write any of this down. But this is all going away, all right? Because the only thing that we need is that, you know, Cu2 plus remaining. So bye-bye, unfortunately. Okay. Now, we still want to find out what that percentage of cadmium is. Well, how am I going to convert this copper that I have into cadmium? They're two totally different, you know, balanced equations. Well, if we pull up the solubility products, which is what's happening here, right? Anytime that you have a precipitation, we're dealing with solubility product, KSP. And if we look at the difference between the, the compound that is going to form between Cu and the sulfide, remember sulfide is S2 minus. You'll form CUS, and if you have the same solution, you'll also form CDS. What is the similarity between the two compounds? Ah, they both have the sulfur in there, the sulfide ion. That's the common ion. Remember, common ions are ions that are in both compounds or both equations. So this sulfide ion is acting as a common ion, and that's the link between the two equations. I have now the copper concentration, and I can find out the sulfur concentration because I have the KSP. Then from there, I can use the sulfur concentration to find out what the cadmium concentration is. Now, just know that these two KSP values, they're very different, right? One is times 10 to the negative uh, 45. The other one is times 10 to the negative 28. So, in this case, we do have to take the one that we have remaining. We're going to use this one first because that's the information that we have. So, I'm just going to take uh, cadmiums for a little bit and put it down here because we're not using it. We're going to use the CUS. Okay, so let's write that balanced equation for the copper to sulfide. Cu. S, that's a solid, double arrow because we're talking about equilibrium and K values. They did tell us that the copper was going to be a two plus, and we know that the sulfur is the two minus, right? Also, you could find that out by saying that there's one to one, one copper for one sulfur. If copper is a two plus, the sulfur has to be the negative two. And then these are aqueous and aqueous. Okie dokie. So now we know that we have 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity of the Cu2 plus. So that's going here, 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity, and we don't know the sulfur. So I'm just gonna label that as X. Let's now use our specific KSP equation. Remember the general one is this right here. It's just KSP equals the products raised to the coefficients. So in our case, the KSP would equal the concentration of Cu2 plus times the concentration of the S2 minus. We're solving for this, so that will be x. The copper is 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. And the KSP, we did have to look in the back of the textbook, 8.5 times 10 to the negative 45. Cool. Let's solve. 8.5 times 10 to the negative 45 equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth times x. This one's pretty simple. Just divide by that number, 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. This cancels, and we just are left with x. Okay? So x equals... 
I just want to put this number into the calculator. 8.5 times 10 to the negative 40. Molarity, because we're dealing with, you know, concentration values. And since we did say that the S was just X, that was the concentration of the S, the sulfide ion, 8.5 times 10 to the negative 40 molarity. Okay. So now let's just put this information over here. Whoop, hold on. Didn't mean to, you know, take part of that equation. So that's going over here. Uh, we don't really need the math anymore. So if you want, I'll just maybe get rid of this. Pause the video if you do need it. Because now, remember, the common ion is the sulfur. Now we're going to be using this KSP because we have the link. So maybe I'll throw this maybe over here just to show you that, you know, we use that. I'll put this up here as like a general. And now let's work on this side, basically the same thing that we did. So in this case, it's going to be CDS. So CDS, that's a solid double arrow. Breaks down into, they told me that it was CD2+, plus, so CD2+, plus, that's aqueous, there's a charge. And then the sulfide ion again is the 2-. minus. Now in this case, which one do we know? We know the sulfide ion concentration, 8.5 times 10 to the negative 40. So now this number is what I know, 8.5 times 10 to the negative 40, because it's a common ion. And I'm looking for what that concentration of the cadmium is. So, X. Same general formula for KSP. Let's just write it out what it is for this one now. KSP equals concentration of CD2 plus times the concentration of S2 minus. We know that now the sulfur ion is the 8.5 times 10 to the negative 40th. This is X, and this KSP is the one in the back of the book. This is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 28. So let's go for it. 1.0 times 10 to the negative 28 equals X times 8.5 times 10 to the negative 40th. Divide by 8.5 to the negative 40th. 8.5 times 10 to the negative 40th, and I'll put my x value over here. So, 1 times 10 to the negative 28 divided by that 8.5, and I get 1 point, I guess we'll do 1.176. 1 1.176 times 10 times 10 to the 11th. <laughs> okay, huge number. Remember, don't be scared by what your numbers are, right? If the math is correct, we arrived at the correct answer. But what does this actually mean? That means that the cadmium concentration that's going to remain is 1.176 times 10 to the 11th molarity. No, okay. But remember, we want to know what the percentage of the CD2 plus remained in the solution. Now, what this actually means, remember, it's just the CD2 plus concentration, but also it's the molar solubility of when precipitation is going to be occurring. You have a lot of leeway here. Basically, in order for precipitation to occur, this cadmium concentration has to be 1.176 times 10 to the 11th molarity. So we have a long way to go. We only started with 0.01 molarity, right, of the cadmium. We can go up to 1.176 times 10 to the 11th molarity. So the question is, What's the percentage of the cadmium that is remaining in the solution? 
if this is your cap and you can go up to this, basically we can go up to this value before precipitating. So before making a solid, we have a long way to go. Did any of it precipitate? No. So how much is still in the solution? All of it. What percentage is that? 100%. So what percentage of the cadmium remains in the solution? 100%, all of it. You can basically go up to this really high value of molarity before you start precipitating out CDS with the information that they gave you. So you're not, you're not going to see any precipitation of the cadmium. 100% of those ions are in the solution. And that's it. So maybe big, big 100 over here, 100%, 100% CD2 plus in solution. It's all dissolved, no precipitating. That's the final answer. Interesting question. Woohoo. So, what'd you guys think? That's enough coloring for now. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, this one was a bit challenging, but we did it. I really hope this helped. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video, and I hope to be talking to you soon. Okay, have a great day. Bye bye.